I came here from the Arab Cultural Festival, which is being held in um, Union Square. And it's kind of amazing to see this gathering of Arabs from all over the Bay Area and our, our music and our clothes and our um, politics. Um, so I picked a poem that's kind of an anti-Blue Angels poem <laughs> to start. A friend of mine, I've mentioned this to a few people, a friend of mine put on Facebook, America's the only country where people run outside when fighter jets come over. And so a lot of my poems are going to be about other places that have to live under fighter jets. But this first one is inspired by Adrienne Rich. I did a whole series based on her work last April after she died. And it's from a, the epigram is from a poem called Sickbed Shores. All is matter, of course. Matter, of course. While we're on this road. Today the sign may be the white flower falling from the bush. The edges brown, one side wilted, or perhaps a child pointing at the branch, arcing like a dragon's neck, quiet breath, wood of fire. We can read drops streaming, the shingles, the condensation on the pane. Today the sign will be sound, the sky vibration, jets in the bellies of clouds, or perhaps the song drifting from a door half open, hot on a storefront church at the corner of MacArthur. What we read are sometimes words, or more often, the curve of the back, the lines below the eyes, each one explanatory and specific, silhouetting stature or sickness, one leg gently twisted outward. Today, the sign will be the flutter of Chinese elm leaves, the comb of grass to one side, the inversion of a tree trunk, infested colony and celebration, and the soft underside of ivy, quiet and stretching. Hear the slap of the oar, the keel humming right beneath the surface, a sunken to the bottom. Two, today the sign will be easy, raked into wheat fields, plucked from dying beanstalk, heard in a note strayed from a chord chart, stuck to the sole of a boot. Today the sign, a matter of course, where you travel or stand, the rhythm is under breath, in the hollow of your neck, vibrato against your windpipe. Each word you utter is coated by the embryo of a new word, divine from time untouched and undesigned. Mm -hmm. The next two poems, I spend a lot of time in Palestine. And last year I spent uh, time teaching at the Palestinian Writing Workshop. There's no such thing as creative writing in a lot of places in the world. Palestine is one of them. So the idea of going to school to write never occurs to anybody. Um, but the thing that is a constant presence, and I'm sure many of you know about the wall, the apartheid wall, um, if you don't know, the Israelis built a wall between, along the line of the Palestinian territories in the West Bank. It's 430 miles. It's 26 feet high. Um, and it is a barrier between not only them and the Palestinians, but the Palestinians and themselves. So uh, there are many villages. It completely surrounded many villages that it went through. So the next two poems are about that. One of them is about where I grew up, and the other one is something else, but we'll get to that. Climb up and over. Our garden bordered an alley, which crossed into a hayfield and stretched to a hillside. Our yard had lilacs that surrounded a pond filled with sweet peas and crested by vines. Our porch led to a street that lined the road running from our house all the way to West Virginia. And we walked from one house to Neff Woods, from another to the waterfall across the bridge. The coal mining corner of Pennsylvania, with all its faults, let cows chew from one neighbor to the next, and children crossed yards that were not theirs to get to school and sit on steps of someone's porch without asking. And we didn't know this was belonging. This was Pennsylvania and not Abu Dis, where a wall was erected right down Main Street, keeping the kids away from the school they've been going to their whole lives. So what do they do, they wonder, like the farmers of Azun, whose vegetable fields, olive trees, are out of reach, who stare at the 25 feet of stone and wire, guarding them from their own food as a security measure that forces a four kilometer walk to get in a gate that gives them 20 minutes to slip over to the other side for bushes of barley to take home if they're still there 
or if you live in the Anaka district in East Jerusalem, it's probably not. Some things had to move to make room for the wall, and without your home, everyone is more secure. The landscape is sliced, and lands are carved and contained. I have studied maps, the blue waters and green mountains. Yellow countries and red ones all meant something to the cartographers, and I followed them. A puzzle of colors explained in the legend in the corner that said this was the earth. Lakes, mountains, cliffs, buttes, highways, hiking trails, one-way streets, capitals, borders, mileage counters, oceans, rivers, snaking through states and countries, ranges peaking across Urals, frozen tundra, pampas, veldt, thickly populated cities, railroad tracks. I run my finger along each symbol, each road designation, each color, each touchstone. How do you mark a barrier? How do you make it part of the landscape? What is the symbol of restraint? What is the color of confinement, disruption, loss, and separation of sorrow? This is not the wall of the great march to liberation, just a slow death to the earth that inhabits it and the people who make it home. And the second one is called Heartwood. And it's, um, okay, so some Palestinians figure out how to sneak over the wall. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so it's kind of about that. It's actually uh, based on a story my friend Suhair Hamad told me. They were sitting in a jeep while she was filming a movie out there and um, out along the wall. And um, they were watching some of these grandmothers. And I base it on the life of a tree. Let me give you a brief uh, piece of information that I use. As a tree grows, older xylem cells in the center of the tree become inactive and die, forming heartwood. Because it is filled with stored sugar, dyes, and oils, the heartwood is usually darker than the sapwood. The main fu function of the heartwood is to support the tree. Heartwood. While you watch, you are being watched, and every word you write is scribed on arm, henna petrified with white veins of your witnessing. You need to grow skin hardier than fresh limbs, slick and sentient, reaching and waiting. Solify the cavium, harden your bark, capture your tears inside of your trunk, molten tribu tributaries where moving life is unseen. What is seen are skimming barbed wire grandmothers scrambling over the gate, putting their groceries under their skirts. Your jeep idles near the wall as you tick off one after another. The pinch of wires just refreshes old scars. They don't think of it as much as you do when your organs soak with sugars. All the blood is trapped below your heart. Even while it chokes you, the cells confine the color drained from your face. As you watch them escape to the other side of the same square of dust, crippled, tired, pulling on power of healed over wounds as thick as branches. Examine those albino eyes, expressionless, stupefyingly blind, and see in them rings of endless years, lives, ages that log their four decades of stunted growth, roots lengthening below the terrain. Their bowels are magnetic, drawing in liveliness and murdering it inside of them. Where the heartwood thickens, they have no power, they can't see into the tree where everything dead gathers and protects them. Stone, core wood, heart. I'll just read one more. Also based on um, an Adrian Rich epigram, a poem called I Was There, Axel. And the epigram is kind of daunting. She walked on knives to gain a voice the last lesson we learned. I want the mothers to sign contracts that they will take their secrets with them. They won't unearth the relics of children gone or lose the imprint of their thumb on the knob of the stove in a house left long ago. I want them to hide inside the prayers that hum the house in darkness and hold the silence that makes singing a miracle. They should not lift the frail finger to point at the drawer where the embroidered pillowcases weigh with letters heavy that would have been written if they only had time. Mothers have no debt on this earth. Everything is paid off. 
Don't wax into the chime of old language, melody unstrung. Fall back onto their commandments that have ruled so long, we forgot they had not written the holy book that's spraying on the nightstand. I saw you take it when you were busy and stow it in your duffel. I know who I am without the dissembling of the DNA, the counting of fibers and cells and comparisons of form and skin color. Don't use my eyes to reminisce. Don't forget where you are and talk to old friends who you haven't seen in 40 years. They are not here. I am. Mothers, you can go. Hard it is, as it is to keep the trunk packed light, body into infinity. Carry it off to wherever it is afterwards, or forget about it altogether. As much as we whisper to you, we really can't hold all that there is. Don't remind us that the dying have no regrets. Nothing can be done. Sorrow can only be felt by the living. Thank you.